All right, hey guys, uh, I'll just quickly show you how to add new photos or modify existing photos for my Zen Treasure mod. So the mod comes in two parts. You've got the base mod here, which uh, contains all of the scripting for every pretty much everything that the mod does. But then you have a separate mod for defining the uh, photos themselves. By separating the mods, it makes it easy to add the photos. Here is just the mod containing all of the photos for my DayZ server. This is only for Livonia currently, if you want to add other maps, you'll have to do that manually. It's pretty easy to do though. You just go around, take screenshots in game of a certain location that you want to make a stash out of. Um, or you could just have generic photos if you wanted to. I like to actually have a photo of the actual stash location to make it easier to find for people and a bit more immersive. We have an X and Y coordinate. These are map coordinates. So you can go to I Survive and get the map coordinates that way or just go in game. It ignores the Y or height coordinate because uh, the mod will automatically calculate the height of the ground. So we have a sh short description here of each photo. If you type treasure type in all capitals, that will be replaced by the config for the treasure type. So what happens when the player reads the photo is this config file gets uh, read. I'll go over these in a moment, but down here, these are the predefined um, loot config. If you go down here to treasure types, uh, we have the config name. This is purely for your own reference. So generic small and generic large will contain all of the um, loot randomly. So whatever loot you've defined down here will go into the generic ones randomly. That's why it doesn't have any loot. And the description will just say valuable. So in game it will say, you know, the story will say something like, if you're reading this, then I'm dead. I buried some. And then this keyword here will be replaced with the description. So it will say valuable, for example, if a generic small loot type is randomly selected, then the description will say, I buried some valuable supplies under a pile of tires. And if we scroll down here, we have hunting. So if this loot config is randomly selected, then it will say, I buried some hunting supplies. And these are the loot config for hunting supplies. Uh, Pre-def is short for predefined loot. And that's up here. So we have predefined SVD. This will spawn an SVD with these attachments. H is health. So by using the, I don't know what this character is called, this uh, line character um, separator, I can say H equals 0 0.05, and that will set the battery to 5% health. And then C is chance. So if I say 0 0.5, then it has a 50% chance of spawning a battery with 5% health. So here we have a predefined Mosin. These are the different class names that can be randomly selected. So we have the regular Mosin, the camo variant, black variant, green variant, and then we have the attachments that can randomly be selected. If you don't specify chance, then it's obviously a 100% chance of spawning. C equals 0 0.9 means this has a 90% chance of spawning. And it says attachments. If this item cannot be spawned on the gun itself, it will be just spawned into the loot container. Um, so yeah. I've got a bunch of examples here predefined. Predefined ammo box is just a vanilla ammo box, but it's filled to the brim with a random ammo box. So Zen random ammo box is an item that spawns in game. And then once it is created, it will automatically randomly turn into a vanilla random ammo box. Um, so scrolling down, this is the hunting loot config. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. We have a minimum quantity, max quantity. So this is for the actual ammo stack. So you can have a maximum ammo stack of 20 Winchester rounds and a minimum of 10. The minimum health is 10% and the spawn chance is 50%. You get the idea. So we have base building here. Um, these are custom container types that can't be picked up by the player. So they hold all of the loot, but the player can't walk off with the container. It won't let them put the container into their hands or their cargo. So yeah, pretty simple mod. Obviously this is inspired by Hunter's um, treasure mod, but his mod didn't do things I needed my mod to do on my server. So I had to write my own mod, uh, but credit to him for the idea and the concept. Debug teleport to photo. If you turn this on, when you read a photo, you'll be automatically teleported to the stash. This is for, obviously for admins setting up the config. It just makes debugging a lot easier. Debug always spawn stash ID. If I set this to one, then this will always spawn uh, generic large. So generic small would be zero, generic large would be one. So if I wanna see how my loot um, populates the container that I'm spawning into in, um, in game, I can set this to 
uh, two. And then whenever I read a photo, it will force that photo to always be stash ID two. And the stash ID is the array index of our treasure types. So again, first entry would be zero, second entry would be one and so on. By setting that to negative one, that disables that. Treasure persistence seconds is how long the stash stays in game once it's spawned. So what happens is the player reads the photo first, right? And that populates this config file with the treasure location and the treasure hunter. So when a player reads a photo with this stash position, they will be added to the treasure hunter list. And then the player has this many seconds, which is about a week, I think in game to go and find the stash. If they don't find the stash within a week, they are automatically removed from the list. And when they go to find the stash, it won't be there anymore. So they have about a week to find it. You could set this to like nine, 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 nine or whatever to make sure that the stash never despawns. And so long as the player eventually sometime goes nearby it, it'll spawn. Um, but I like to set this to about a week that ensures that the um, list gets cleaned up by, you know, players that aren't active on the server. So what happens is when the player reads the photo, the stash isn't spawned into the world immediately with persistence. Instead, the player is added to this list. And then when the player goes near this location within a hundred meters or so, the stash will spawn. The player will be removed from this list. And then this comes into effect. So 3,600 is about an, an hour in game. So the player has an hour to find the stash once they've triggered the spawn by getting close to it within 100 meters of the stash location. If they don't find the stash within an hour or whatever you set this to, and they leave the area, then the stash will despawn after an hour. If you wanted the stash to last a week as well, you just paste that in there. And then the trigger lasts a week. If the player gets within 100 meters of the stash location, then the stash itself will spawn in underground and stay persistent for a week. And then finally we have is winter map. So I actually have two variants. If I bring up the mod folder, I actually have two variants of photos. We have the standard photo and then a winter variant. So on my server, uh, when it was running, it's shut down now, but when I was running my server, I alternated between summer and winter every you know month or so. And when I alternated to winter, I could simply set this to one and then in game, all of the textures for all the items would look like this. So they'd swap to a winter variant. Um, obviously that's completely optional. It is extra work. You have to go and take two photos of everything. One in a um, summer version and one in a winter version. So if you don't want to alternate between seasons, just leave this as zero. And then the mod will always select the photo file without the underscore winter. And finally, when you're adding photos, uh, the photo number is the texture file. So for example, if I wanted to add a 26th photo, I would go to my photo mod, come down here, copy this, rename this to 26. Um, I buried a, a uh, treasure type stash at such and such. This would create a 26th photo. I would put in the uh, coordinates and this is where the stash would spawn. And then to add a photo, I would simply add a 26th photo. So photo 26, the mod will automatically apply this texture to that item when it's spawned in game. Um, and the mod comes with a Photoshop file template for adding photos. So you would just go in game, add your photo here, save it as photo 26 and convert it to PAA and recompile the mod into your server mod pack and you've added a photo. Now the stash itself doesn't need a types entry, but all of these do. If you want these spawning in the world, you'll need to add a um, XML entry for each one. There will be a default XML config included in the mod folder. With that said, have fun guys. Source code is on my GitHub as always.